All right, we're going to look at the 6002 scopes. Usually these are Tektronics, TDS, uh, 2012, 2014, and 2024 part numbers. They're all kind of the same. They're all kind of a little bit different. But in order to turn them on, you just up in the left corner, you push the power button like I'm showing right there. And you kind of got to be a little bit patient with these because they're going to take about 10 seconds to come on. So usually when you first push it, you know, don't just push it again if it doesn't do anything. It's going to run for a little bit. The green lights will come on and it runs a bunch of self-checks. Let's just be patient. It's coming up. We can daydream about what we're going to do this weekend. Okay, so it's up. Now when this comes up, be careful what button you press because you might accidentally change the language. I usually just press the channel 1 button and that immediately gets us into the scope running mode. Now depending on what signal you're is, now I have a signal attached to channel 1 right now. I can start turning some knobs and you can see some things happen, but it's kind of a little bit messed up. So usually if you have a well-behaved signal, it's always a good idea to just, as soon as you turn it on, go up and do auto set right there. When I press it, it'll run for a second, but it'll eventually find the signal. We can see that right here. Now it's nice and centered. We can use the knobs to adjust like the Y and T axis. So that's the voltage and the Y, and then the X axis is actually our time dimension. Now while I'm messing with that, you can notice in the bottom there, there's a 500 millivolt thing, and that actually tells you how tall each dashed gray box is. That's our Y scale. And then there's a M1 millisecond. That shows us how long our each gray box is. That gives us our sort of T scale. Right now what I'm showing is um, what happens when you mess with the trigger on the system. Now when you auto set the scope, it'll figure out what the trigger is. But you can also manually change that in case you're looking for particular events. We don't need to worry too much about that today, but it's just a thing you know we'll explore more later on. Again, I'm sort of zooming in right there, and you can see the X and Y axes. And I can also go up and press on the measurement button. And then on the right side, what you can get are some actual, which is really neat, little like automatically calculated things about the signal in question. So right now, it's showing the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, as well as the frequency of the signal twice. Um, I don't want that. That's useless. So I'm going to make my third measurement be the period right here. Because I'm lazy. I don't feel like inverting my frequency to find my period, even though we know how we could do that. And then I have that, and it's useful. And there's a lot of other mess things you can mess with and figure out.